Welcome back to the Perfect Storm for episode. I don't know. Eight. 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 <laughs> okay. Episode eight. Uh, joined by Faithful, Justin, and Phil. How you going, Kyle? Kyle. Phil. <laughs> Justin. Phil. We're well, feeling a bit tired today. A bit smashed. No, we're alive, mate. We're ready to go. Full of beans. Ready to go. Want to talk <clears throat> to you guys about um, freedom of speech. Mm. How important it is and how important it's been throughout time. And Mr. Bean actually leads the way today. Wow. Mr. Bean. Rowan Atkins. I grew up watching a lot of British humour and uh, Mr. Bean, in well, Rowan Atkinson in his various forms, was a large part of my childhood. And he has a nine-minute speech where he um, talks about free speech. Did you guys watch that? I did, and I had no idea this dude was that intelligent. Like Mr. Bean is portrayed as a, he, you know, he had the Black Adder, I think, first, didn't he? Black Adder is that the one where mm-hmm. in the yeah, army when they're in the trench warfare thing? Like he's hilarious, but him on freedom of speech. Everyone listening to this now needs to go on YouTube or. Twitter, oh, it's X, sorry, whatever you want. Find Rowan Atkins. He's just made a compelling speech. Before about... it's taken down. Go and view it before <laughs> it's taken down. Well, maybe too. The fact he's so famous, he says, people won't touch me because I'm famous, but they're, they're jailing people for ridiculous reasons in England. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous, mate. I, I'll never forget, mm. during COVID, there's a pregnant woman, I think in Ballarat or Bendigo, one of the bees in Victoria. She puts up a post on Facebook and the Victorian coppers come around and arrest a pregnant woman in her house. Mate, I nearly lost my mind. It, it was the most disgusting thing I've seen in this country that a woman, a pregnant woman gets handcuffed in her house mm. Because she expressed an opinion on Facebook. I remember seeing that. What garbage, mate. That's it. You got it up. Someone told me the other day they met her on a plane. And uh, she's a nice lady. (laughs) Look at these coppers doing this. I just was, I lost my mind. I am still get stirred up about it. Um, And this is essentially what's happening in the UK on steroids right now. On steroids. On steroids. You love England. So why is there a big, you know, there's a big, it seems like the, the whole government's going against, you know, they're, they're all for uh, migration, Islamic. It just seems like it's all, you know. The globalists are, are opening up the borders everywhere, not just England. They don't want And nations. the media is doing the same. So, they, you know, you, you look at something, you'll see a, an article, you'll see a video on, on, on whatever, you know, if Tommy Robinson puts something out or whoever. Right, it's gone. It's gone within hours, and mm. then there's some kind of they can't arrest some people because they're overseas. But there's two sides of the coin. It's not just this. Seems like a one, you know, just a one side. I I don't care what the issue is. Whether it's immigration, it's a flashpoint in Germany, in France, in America, even less so here now, but it has been. Mm. England, it's off the reservation. But whatever the issue is, if you cannot express your opinion on it, you could have the wrong opinion, you could be off. As long as you're not harming someone or inciting someone to harm someone, you just got a, the wrong opinion, you are entitled to have the wrong opinion. I guess my big, Praise thing, God. Is, my big thing is it's not controlling the situation. What's going on in the streets? Silencing people or, or or policing someone's Facebook account or the Instagram account, whatever they're doing and whatever posts they're making, they're at home doing these posts mm. or going outside taking pictures out their window, whatever it is, <laughs> you're policing the wrong thing. The Mate. people in the street are the ones doing the damage. I want I have to share a Bible verse on this because <clears throat> in this is classic early church stuff where they are going gangster against the status quo. And and Acts chapter 4, for the people at home, Acts 4.16, 
uh, they've been preaching. They're trying to stop them preaching, stop them speaking, and, and they're saying they they kick them out of the council. Uh, Peter is arrested and he's kicked out, and here they, he he says, they say, "What shall we do with these men? For indeed, a, a notable miracle has been done through them. It's evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it." So that's the first thing. They can't argue their case. Mm. Because you can't win the argument, you have to silence the other side. So what they do, they say they come in and they say, um, you know, but so that this spreads no further among the people. This is what's going on in England. This is mm. what's going on everywhere. Let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in his name. So they called and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. And, of course, the apostles say, uh, verse 24, we cannot but speak the things we've seen and heard. They said, you can try and stop us, but we're going to do it. That's freedom of speech. If they could have shut down the early Christians, they could have stopped the spread of Christianity. Mm. Every Christian listening to this should be into freedom of speech. And by the way, people you disagree with. Yep. I was in, I was going through a, a show, uh, the LA County Fair, when I lived in the United States. And there's this a Muslim dude with a King James Version of the Bible preaching, <laughs> saying that nowhere in the Bible is Jesus called God. And I, I had my day off. Do you like your day off, Phil? Love a day off. What about you, Kyle? Don't have them. Oh, come on. <laughs> this was your day off. Do you guys I, get I'd day off? I'd be smashed. <laughs> yeah, you should have. How do I apply have... for a day off around here? That's what the Sabbath's about, mate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I, I'm on my day off. I've got my son Caleb with me. He's 10. Massive, big African-American dude with a little cap on. And he's preaching Islam. And, he's, and uh, you know what? God bless him. He's entitled to preach Islam. But he was saying that nowhere in the Bible is Jesus called God. And this is old lady in this absolute ferocious argument with him. Mm. She's pointing her finger, yelling at him, and he's just giving her heaps. And he's got the Bible, he's marked it everywhere. <laughs> and I could, oh, I switched off the day off thing and I hooked in. I couldn't help it. I said, is that right, mate? Well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Let's go to John chapter 20. Let's go to Isaiah 9, 6, all these places, and I silenced the dude with an argument. No one punched or no one was violent. We had a discussion about the truth. Mm. And if you've got the data, if you've got the facts with you, you can win the argument. People that want to silence others cannot win the argument. That's a, that's your first tip there in Acts chapter 4. Mm. They can't win the argument. And I, I love that Mr. Bean has come out in defense of freedom of speech. Mm. And Good on you, Rowan. Does on you, Mr. Bean. So America has it as their, is it their first or their second amendment? Freedom of speech? Uh, second amendment's firearms, isn't it? The right to bear arms. Must be the first amendment then. First amendment. Freedom of speech. That's how we're Australians. Well, so we the firearms are pretty up there. They're up close to the top, aren't they? <laughs> and, 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 you know, the only reason the Americans have the firearms so high up is the idea in the... Um, the First Amendment. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Second Amendment of firearms is that the government could act in tyrannical ways and take away your rights. So you should be able to... This is America. You should be able to overcome them with violence, with a, with a firearm. So... Mm. That's why they've included it in there in the Second Amendment. It's right up there. But freedom to speak is the first. Mm. Rowan, Mr. Bean in this speech, which I hope everyone watches, he, this dude is smart. He says three things that matter in his life. The first and most important one is that you can eat food. Yep. Pretty <laughs> we, important. We have to agree with that. I think that's pretty good. Second one is you can speak freely. Yep. And the third one is you have shelter. You can have a house. He puts freedom to to speak as you wish. Right in the middle. Above having shelter. <laughs> That's gold. Mm. 
That's gold. Watch his speech, everyone. Mm. You should. We we can't play a bit of it, can we? Because oh, all that stuff's copyrighted, I guess, isn't it? Oh, everybody else is sharing it. Yeah, but we probably don't have time now. But um, <laughs> he's a smart fella. Watch it. It's <laughs> this has come all over the world. They are losing the argument. The populace has had enough of their policies. So instead of actually changing their policy, they're trying to shut up everyone that speaks mm. against them. Mm. What yeah. garbage. Mm. Which which did happen quite a bit. Uh, so rather than recently through the COVID crisis basically, but that was pushed more because of fear and you must trust the science and we are the science so you must do what we say. <laughs> it, 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 Science, science. What is science? Science is a method. Whatever they want it to be at the time. You put up a thesis and then you have to have a, you know, an empirical evidence. You do an experiment to see if that thesis is true. And until someone else comes along and knocks it off, that becomes a fact Mm. in science. But it's to say you don't trust science. Science is a method. It's a method of thinking. Do you guys expect much more of this um, totalitarian anti-free speech kind of stuff before the election? In in the in the in the globalist kind of regime, it's like everyone everyone's free to do whatever they want. However, they're not because with that becomes standards of what you got to call people and how you got, you can't offend people and you you know mm. and the whole pronoun thing coming out. You must call me by this, otherwise I'll be offended, and then a woke culture. Mm. And, and so it's it yeah, it's it's interesting to me that shutting up speech and shutting up the other side is a big agenda. Oh, they're losing, and if they're losing, they'll they'll do anything. Look at the way they've controlled algorithms on Google, Facebook, mm. the the feeds that come in. Uh, sometimes I'll do it for marketing purposes because they they see what you've posted about or typed about, and then they'll that the big algorithms will send you the right ads. But they're doing stuff to control elections, which is all about power. So yeah, I expect they're going to keep doing it. Mm. And to the people at home, don't be naive and get engaged and 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 think for yourself. Have the the freedom to actually make your own choice and to speak your own mind, to have your own thoughts. Don't let people control your thoughts. Some of the hardest thing, though, is to change, like people listening to us and going, right, you've you got a certain slant and you've got a certain belief. And you're right, beliefs do control what you see to be true. Every day. But you've got to test that. You've got to test that and go, is it really true? Or like if someone insults me. If someone insults me and says something about me, I've got to ask two questions. Number one, is it true about me? And if it's and if it is, I've got the I've got the opportunity to improve on how I behave and how I talk and whatever it whatever it is that they're correcting me for. But if it's not true, I have a little pity party for about three seconds and then get on with life because you you got you got the opportunity to ignore truth or ignore what people say or accept that as truth and go, yeah, that, okay, I see what your point is. Yeah. I need to change. And you, you do that with everything coming in. You've got to do that with but, everything but, coming f- in. But fundamentally what you're talking about, you have the freedom <laughs> to either listen or not to listen. Yeah. What we're talking about, they want to take that away from you. That you can only listen to one side of an argument. You're not allowed to hear that other side because that could be wrong thinking. That doesn't agree with me. And what rubbish. I can think for myself. God gave me a brain. Let yeah. me think for myself. Well, and if pe- you got the facts, Phil, people are actually videoing what's going on in England. Just just holding up a video and and showing what's it's, going on. Yeah, and they're going. That's hate speech. Oh, hate speech. Yeah, don't share that because that's false information, mate. They're going to lose this because the globalists by nature are bullies. The bully tries to control through all that stuff. The populace, the angry mob, the angry mob always wins in history. Mm. Always wins in history. And this is the um, – I was just looking for the video because they have a video of somebody doing it. You type in President Donald and it gives you Donald Duck or Donald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Reagan. 
Yeah, that's yeah. algorithms. And then there was one, the assassination. Joe attempt. Rogan tried it and he said that's not actually the case. So. Well, it was. I actually tried it on the day, but they got They sprung. changed it. They, they got, got sprung caught. so quick they changed it back. <laughs> um, assassination <laughs> attempt on Hitler, Reagan, Pope John, Bob Marley, Truman, like, but it wouldn't have Trump. And there is a few actual articles that are behind paywalls where – Google admitted that they got sprung and it was an error and then they reversed the error. And <laughs> it's a big thing for speech at the moment and you can see it in the States, you know, the big thing about Trump coming back to Twitter. I'm back, you know, there's mm. a big party and everyone cheering. And um, they, mu they must hate Elon Musk. Well, yeah. They definitely do. <laughs> they loved him when he was electric car man. Like he's saving the planet. And he's already talked about, after Trump's assassination assassination attempt, he talked about the fact that there's been multiple attempts on his life where people were stopped in cars with guns on the way to him well, as well. Yeah, and he's got super security. So what, if they can't win the argument. Uh, you don't like the message, kill the messenger. And the, mm, yeah. the New Testament, that's the history of the early church. They're martyring, murdering over speech. Remember, the gospel that they're sharing, they're not like, you have to accept this, I'm going to shoot you. It's like, Jesus mm. forgives you. You can just say, yeah, that's great, mate. See you later. I'm yep. going to the pub. You know, you don't have to do anything with it. But the fact that it was so compelling, they hate it because people are accepting it, so they've got to shut it down. Live and let live. Mm. Live and let live. And unless it's harming and, and the, you're inciting violence or you're doing something like that. And this is where they broaden it out. They this try to make it gets gray. They try to make it. It's, you know, if you are being assaulted by someone, physically assaulted, or what happened? Oh, they, they called me a name. Mm. And when we were kids, sticks and stones. Break my bones. But names. Will never hurt me. That was how it worked. That and was cute. Do you guys do anything else like that? Oh, we do Humpty Dumpty, sat on a wall. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty. Had a great fall. <laughs> all the king's horses. And all the king's men. <laughs> Couldn't put Humpty together again. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Back on topic. <laughs> Sorry. Freedom. Uh, what, Wincy, wincy spider. <laughs> the West, and I have to say, what we don't acknowledge today mm. is the West has freedom of speech because of a brave German monk. One of my favourite people in history is Martin Luther. Martin Luther. Flawed man. His language is rather chirpy and he loves going to the pub and everything else. But was he full of courage? Oh, but they tried to silence him as well. Oh, they were going to murder him. Mate. Surprisingly, they didn't murder him. It was God's protection only because everyone else had been. The fact he knew he'd get killed, but he did it anyway. Mm. He said, my conscience is captive to the yeah. word of God. You can yeah. tell me what I'm supposed to think. I'm supposed to believe this because the church says, and he says, yeah, go jump on your head. There's some pretty major things he said. He, he said, if there's a hell, Rome is above, built above it. <laughs> he, he got a bit he got he got that, chirpy. He did. Now's a copy to the front door of the church, to the front door of the church door in Wittenberg, the 16th century, Twitter feed. The 16th century Twitter feed is the church. The 95 Theses, which, by the way, if I have a book where it's been translated in English, it's like the 95 I reckon he could have done in 10, mm. but he's so repetitive. Yeah. The guy yeah. is steaming, mm. and he just cannot believe that he's been deceived his whole life by his leaders, by the church. And so the dude on his own with all the forces of hell against him, he stands up and he says, you know, which pope am I going to believe? You've contradicted that. You've done this. Mm. He, he, they, they put his books on a table and they said, do you recant of what's in these books? And they, they, they know he's going to die. And he says, give me 24 hours, which he, he was thinking about what he's doing here. He knew the consequences. He goes back away. He comes back 24 hours later and they say, do you recant of these, what's written in these books? And he says, which parts? Some of them says the Pope's a great guy, and da, 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 oh, that's my interpretation. But then other parts says that he's an antichrist of, yeah. you know. And he said, in the end, he says, my conscience is captive to the word of God. Mm -hmm. To go against that is neither safe nor reasonable. 
So what he does, he sets up the West for success, that everyone can think what they want to think and do as long as they're not harming others, stealing property or whatever, they can do what they want to do. And so Phil might decide, I'm going to start a fairy floss factory. Um, go your hardest. You got the freedom. We live in a free country. And I've got to say, England, my British, my heritage is from the UK. England has fallen, mate. That the government would stop people's speech when it is so not even close to being something that's damaging. They just say we disagree with the levels of immigration. You listen to these poor people. What is going on with the teeth of the people in England? <laughs> Have you seen this? It's pretty bad, eh? The dentists over there. Are there dentists in on. England? <laughs> yeah. What's the story, Phil? Tell us, Phil. I don't know. Tell Look, us. They're a little expert on England. Have you seen the clips? <laughs> I've, this? Se- I've seen it as a gross generalisation, but not recently. Has I've been watching the, the people protesting, the poor people. They're just average Joes. But the Americans have the best teeth in the world, but the Brits, mate. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, we were in between somewhere. <laughs> a lot of my mates just took vitamins. They didn't really eat vegetables. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> England used to be the bastion of freedom, and here we are. We're clearly living in serious times yep. when you can't even say what you th- what you really think in public. <laughs> Do Brits really have bad teeth? We're looking at it on the screen. If you're listening on radio, we keep referencing things that are on the screen because we're also on YouTube. We better get back to the topic. <laughs> Just a reminder, but there's a photo of Mike Myers and his greasy teeth. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, let's not do that. Okay. When Jesus was around, he actually he he protected he protected himself in somewhat with his with his actions, and he tell the people whoever he's healing. He did it a couple of times. Don't go tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Keep it I'm keep it to yourself. Yeah, because he knew what would happen that he'd be they'll, silenced. They'll kill he him. Couldn't be there. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing new, is it? So that's a good point. Uh, back to the timeline here. We've actually got. Um, so Trump, Donald Trump, has actually kicked off Twitter on January 8, 2021. And then once Musk took over, he unlocked a bunch of permanent bans. Mm. He was allowed back. He didn't come back because he wanted to stay on his own platform, Truth Social. But um, today, today he has decided to exercise his free speech, come back on uh, X. So the day being 13th of August. 13th of August. And um, he's doing this, uh, he probably just finished uh, this Twitter live spaces with Musk where they were just going to talk about whatever they want to talk about. And in response to this news that that would happen, the European Union sends Elon Musk a letter demanding that he censor Donald Trump during their upcoming interview because they don't (laughs) want any disinformation to be shared. (laughs) That tells me everything about the EU. Mm. Like what are they frightened of? This guy's going to be the president of, the, well, possibly the president of the most powerful country in the world, and they want him censored. What hope is there for us, mate? Mm. EU. There's a certain fear, isn't there? People have got fear over information being shared. What do they fear about Donald Trump and what he's going to say? He's a, the po- EU. He's a populist. We're not talking about America. Yeah. Talking about the EU. What do they... What do they fear about Donald Trump saying? And they must think he has some kind of influence in the EU. Uh, mate, I, I watched, again, a clip where they've, they've actually used AI to take Adolf Hitler's speech and put it into English, and this is a first for me. Mm. You can tell watching Hitler speak, the dude got a gift to speak. Like, he's, he's spitting on people. He's, he's into it. And, and he was able to influence the entire nation through his speech. Now, all we're saying to our listeners out there, all Justin's <laughs> saying, is that his speech, he could speak. I, well, no, we don't tell really you, agree I, with let, his let ideologies. And no, that. no, he, he was shocking what yeah. he shared. He, what he's saying, he blames everything on the Jews. That speech, he made this speech that I watched in 1922. It's a shocker, but what really freaked me out is it's very relevant to what's going on right now on immigration. 
And so I can see why the EU are in a panic and England's in a panic because speech is powerful mm. and, and it's when it's persuasive. So what do I do if adults jumped up and he's doing all this stuff? I've got to come back with better speech. We should have more speech when this is going on, not less. And let the facts come out. And they cannot blame everything on the Jewish people. It was absurd logic. But because he was very good at speaking and the people were hungry, they'd gone through the Depression, they've got all sorts of things going wrong from the First World War. The, the, there's lots of causes to it. And he finds a scapegoat in the Jewish people. Adolf Hitler is an idiot, but he's, he can speak. And this is why speech is such a threat because I can persuade men, women, people through my speech mm. and they're fearful that people will get persuaded in a way they don't like. So what do I do, Phil, if, you, if you're going to come out and try and defend your position and I disagree, I think your position's dangerous, Phil. You're going to have us all driving Diesel Hyundai, if you keep talking the way you're talking. We should be on electric cars. <laughs> so what do I have to do? I should lock you down. How dare you speak about diesels? But it's interesting what you say because how then? What, all I'm saying is what Trump says and what, what, he, what he says, if they're fearful of what he's – they want to block him up. And not, he must be, have some kind of influence – in, like the whole world's watching the election and what's happening in America. Why mm. do we care? We're in Australia. Why Mate, do we care what goes on in America? Got, he's got so much influence and that can be used for good or for bad. So how, why, how do we go about that? Let's, let's block him and let's stop him. That's just actually putting a flag up to say listen to him. And then Musk is the one actually taking uh, the majority of the flack for this because he's the one that owns a platform that refuses to be shut by senses mm. and then he's confronted in a um in an interview a little while back you might remember where they say to him well all these advertisers are actually going to pull their ads from your platform because they don't agree with all the hate speech on your platform and we can't say on air what we he can't said. we can't but he says if somebody's going to try and blackmail me with advertising blackmail me with money and then he says things that we can't repeat or won't repeat <clears throat> he said it very strongly and he he He's the one that is risking quite a lot for this free speech. It's um, it's a big it's a big gamble for it's him. A huge gamble. But it, it Bible prophecy. I'll come back to it again. At the end, it's a, it's a flip from the globalists, and this is just Justin's interpretation of Bible prophecy, applying it to my day. Can I be wrong every day of the week? I'm wrong on most things, Phil. Am I wrong on most things? I don't know. I you know. Give you a 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> the globalists are losing bad and the populists are coming back. And their response, they, they actually could change their policy, say, on immigration for England and all of a sudden the populists would calm down. Mm. But they're not doing that. They're just trying to shut everyone up. That's not going to work. It's the wrong fight. Because... The end of the day, if Donald Trump's making arguments that I don't like, I should argue against him. Mm -hmm. And I should wheel the facts out on the stage and say, you know, we can use the Bible and, and I'll, I'll go against some. Some Christian will say they should go to church on Sunday. Jesus went to church on Sunday. I'll say, really? And then I open uh, Luke 4, 16. He keeps the Sabbath. and There's 180 Sabbaths in the book of Acts and... And the Ten Commandments is Sabbath. We know from he, when he dies, he dies on Friday. He rests in the tomb on Sabbath. He comes out Sunday morning. I, I can just come back with argument, argument, argument. And because God gave you a logical brain, you can deal with facts and make your own decision. But you and, may not like that. Do you know what I mean? You've grown up as a, as, that's a, as a person that keeps Sunday as a holy day. And therefore, that and you is go to hate church speech. on that. And yeah. that... And that <laughs> Do you see what I mean? What, what you believe with speech, what you believe has to be tested. Like yep. if some, if, uh, um, you know, a person of 
Islam comes up to me or Muslim comes up to me and goes, you know, what you believe is wrong. I then have to take what they're saying and go, is this true or is this not? And I need to kind of, I need to put aside what I've learnt all my life or what I've been taught all my life and really listen to what they're saying and now put it up against the Bible, put it up against what I know to be true Yep. and say, does it match up? And then I can make a decision from there. But a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just go, I, I don't believe that. I, this is... Yeah, block their ears. See you later. No, no, oh, no, no, no. no, no. Yeah. It's, it's like the other Martin Luther, Martin Luther King... He was. He had a movement of non-violence. He wasn't coercing people by, you know, I'm going to shut your, I'm going to burn your shop if you keep doing this. I'm going to, I'm going to cancel your business. Mm. He went out peacefully protesting and putting across his argument. Whatever happened to the argument? This is how the Jewish. You you go to a, a Jewish synagogue. Their Sabbath is about arguing. They argue. I was at a Jewish school. Oh, well, I used to teach football at a Jewish school. All they do is argue with you. They love arguing theology. Mm. They love arguing Bible. And they know their Bible, you know. Yeah. Um, whatever happened to the good old argument? Amen. Now it's like, I'm offended, shut them up. Yep. And we should, I guess arguing might be interpreted as, as saying it wrongly. Discussion. <laughs> And, and a, a good argument. Intense like moment we can, of fellowship. A passionate, <laughs> a passionate <laughs> discussion. People get uh, – something happens when we lose our argument mm. that we – it's hard to accept the fact that you, you, you can't come up with a better argument and you just have to say, look, I, I concede. Well, at what point do you right say I that? accept that what you're saying is true? You've made good arguments. And this – I'm going to search this. I'm going to study this a bit more. Just saying – that simple statement, what you're saying could be true. Like what we're saying about the Sabbath, people may have just heard, you know, your argument on the Sabbath throughout the Bible and they're like, how can this be true? But I'd suggest that they go away and go, hang on, is this true? Test it. Read it. Mm. See what the Bible says about the Sabbath. See what if Jesus actually kept saying. See all these kind of things in the Bible and then make a decision to whether it's true or not. But it's like I've got my stance. I'm going to stick with it. I don't care what you say. I'm not going to listen. Yeah, I don't want to listen. The, the riot started in England over this shocking murder of these three young girls and everyone jumped to the conclusion because the police wouldn't say. They, they restricted speech again. They won't give the details. Everyone straight away suspected, oh, it's Islamic terrorism. He's done a terrorist act by killing little girls. It wasn't Islamic at all. It was actually a Rwandan immigrant's child who was born in England that did that. He was probably really mentally unwell. And if they had have straight off come out with that fact, mm. England may not have burned. They, they may have saved a lot. But the fact that there's been so much history of them not sharing, not sharing, and they've covered up things that were clearly terrorist acts, this is where people no longer use logic and they just get into passion and emotion and it takes over. And it's really good if you are having an argument, you're discussing the truth. If your emotions get up, I'm an emotional guy. Mm. It's good just to maybe step back from the argument for a while, let all that calm down and just keep, keep sober emotionally when you're discussing truth, when you're discussing an argument you might want to vote for this party, the Labor Party. Your car might want to vote for the Liberal Party, and or you the can you you vote for the Greens <laughs> probably. But you you get so, you get really stirred up, and your emotions get caught up in it. That's where things get out of hand because emotions are like being intoxicated. It's like being drunk. If your emotions are tied up, and it's easy with religion and politics to have our emotions caught up in oh, it. Yeah. We're no longer listening and we're no longer actually just letting the facts tell us now we've got to win our position mm. and we're using all, all, everything we can, throwing the kitchen sink at it to win our position when in fact let's let the facts 
clearly agreed facts. Let the facts come out. And that's where keeping emotionally sober as you're having these discussions and these arguments is really important. And if you're invested in, you're a Queenslander, you, you can't hear anything bad about Wally Lewis because he's the greatest because you, yep. you're emotionally invested into him being the greatest football ever. And then someone will come along with a spreadsheet and say, well, actually Ray Price was a better footballer. And you're going, What? There's you no know, way, mate. There's no way. Wally no. Lewis knew every blade of what a, I've just <laughs> blasphemed on the radio. So, you know, but let the data mm, speak. That's right. Let the data speak. Let, let's take our emotions out and just say Wally's the second best. Well, it's okay. Mm. The sun's going to come up tomorrow right. morning. Uh, and the I big can, argument can about do that. LeBron and Jordan, who's the best, who's the go to basketball. Mm. But, the, you know, <clears throat> in as you were saying, you know, I've I've heard both sides, so I'm I'm going to give an example from, you know, I guess. Anyway, I'll give the example. There, I heard this lady speaking, and she was being interviewed, and she said, w "Well, what do you think of Trump and his um, assassination attempt and all that kind of stuff?" She goes, "They shouldn't have missed." I'm like, "Where? At what point does it get to the stage where you hate so much?" Emotion. That you you want them dead, and I'm like, that's that's one step too far. And you look at Elon Musk, right? He he was left of center, and then he's come to the right. So at some point, Elon's gone. Um, I need to deal with some things here that are really hard to deal with. And, and, and it was I, his son that flipped him because his son transitioned to a girl, and uh, to a woman, and he says, "I've lost my son." The emotional hurt. It's caused him to move his position. And human beings are emotional. And mm. that step you're talking about, she wanted Trump shot in the head. You know, she's gone from having an opinion to hating someone. That's very small step. This is a danger of it all. And that's why they want to restrict speech everywhere. Mm. At the end of time, the Bible says that we will weaken people will be executed the death penalty will apply to how you worship. Mm. That seems utterly absurd right here now in the cool, calm light of day. But it won't be cool and it won't be calm. Well, the best thing at the moment is that we can spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you're listening, now's the time to do it. Now's the time to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ because you can and uh, you're not going to be persecuted at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, It'd which be, leads me to my next point, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that is so that is uh, how the how the disciples died, mm. and I just I'm looking for a great image of it, and I can't find a good one. But uh, let's just say it wasn't pretty. Only John died of old age, didn't he? Yeah, it was something like that. But he'd already been boiled in oil, according to tradition. Well, they couldn't figure out another way to to kill him. And put him on in jail in the island of Patmos. So there's this one. I don't know how accurate this one is, but they say Peter was crucified upside down. Andrew was crucified on a cross. James was killed with a sword. John was boiled and then died of old age. Philip somehow got beheaded and died of old age. Can't work that one out. Was also stoned, crucified. So this is just all the all the different things that they figure were done to these people. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, sword, uh, beheaded, old age, hung. So, uh, Phil, you were saying now's the time to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, what does the Bible say that we can expect if we choose to be disciples of the one who was crucified for? Yeah, it, his look, speech? it's getting to a dangerous. It, it is getting to a dangerous state where, you know, it's already happening in schools. You can't share. You can't share stuff that you believe. You can't. It's especially Christianity. Um, it's already happening in the NGO world, non-for-profit organisations or, or aid organisations going over that are government funded can't share the gospel. Otherwise that, that go or what they believe can't, in predominantly Christian countries. Can't proselytise on you know, the You look at funds. Papua New Guinea, predominantly pr Christian country, you can't share what you believe as far as Christianity is concerned. Other religions, sure, game on. Do what you want. Um, so, yeah, it's starting. I don't know where it will end. John Bunyan is one of 
amazing guy who wrote the book Pilgrim's Progress. He had 11 years in prison. <sighs> All because of speech. He was a he was a tin maker, a tinkler. They he repair your pots and pans. Very poor man. Had all these kids. He had a daughter that was born blind, mm. and she was his favorite. And he he his family are in utter poverty and hardship because he's in the Bedford prison. He could have gone home if he if he said, "I'll never speak again mm. about Jesus and the Bible." But he stayed in that prison for eleven years, and he said that his daughter would come, the blind daughter, to see him. And when she'd leave, he said it was as if they were tearing the skin off my bones. He wanted to protect his little girl. Mm. He he wouldn't leave, but because he believed God had called him to preach the gospel, mm. and th- that's a man. He, under the threat of death and the poverty of his family and all that, he stuck with, I'm a preacher, I've been called to preach, and because of his hardship in that prison, he writes this Christian classic, which is one of the greatest books in the history of Christianity and probably the world, Pilgrim's Progress, because of his time stuck in that prison, mm. uh, died in poverty, all of that thing, but he's he's a hero, and it's the hereafter that he looked to. And that's what we've got to remind ourselves as Christians. This whole political movement, all these things going on, all this is going to pass away. There's a new world coming, Mm -hmm. a new earth, a new heaven and a new earth. And so it's eternity that should govern our speech, Mm -hmm. how we treat others, everything else. It's the big, that's the driving power of Christianity. And this has happened before. The Bible's clear it's going to happen again and it's starting to happen now. And my great fear is the left, the globalists, are teaching the right how to act. When you don't want to, when you want to shut someone down, you will, and you do, and that's what they're going to do again. You can see it. Mm. Uh, stoning of Stephen. Why are they stoning Stephen? Because he preached, <laughs> and uh, he, he. This is Acts seven. For those of you reading along at home. He, he seems to stop his normal, he's going through the history of Israel mm. and then bang, he just hooks into them, mm. hard-hearted, you know, and they drag him out and kill him. And, of course, that seems like such a waste. But the leader of the mob is Saul of Tarsus. Mm. And so Stephen, in the resurrection we'll see the guy that's killing him write a third of the New Testament. Mm. He becomes one of the greatest Christians in the history of Christianity, the Apostle Paul. He would have never become the Apostle Paul if Stephen hadn't have. He, sp- he spoke and under the threat of death, he k- kept mm. speaking. Mm. He kept speaking. That's a man. And it's, it's interesting. That's that tough. Chapter 9. He was, um, you know, at the beginning he was going out, you know, trying to kill Christians. And at the end they were trying to kill him because he was a Christian. <laughs> it's amazing the, the, the turning point, the experience yeah. that he had with God. And Stephen, he, like the, uh, the apostles in Acts 4, they cannot but speak of the things they've seen mm. and heard. You can... You can tell me to shut up, but I will not. I will tell the truth. And you can try and kill me and I can die a martyr, but I'm going to die speaking the truth. Mm. That's that's amazing. And that's what God's calling us to today. Matthew 11, 11, Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. And what happened to him? He had beheaded <laughs> Because of speech. Because of speech. So it, this brings me to, we listened to this song this morning. Uh, a song, there's a musician called Kemi O'Gandy and she's got this song here called How and you can find this on um, uh, Apple Music, Google Music. An awesome song and the lyrics are pretty special. How can you follow Christ only when it's convenient? How can you worship a God who you don't even know? If you don't know God, how can you be willing to be stoned for him? 
how can you die for something unless you live for it each day? Mm. How do you do something that's only convenient? Um, pretty special song. And so ultimately persecution, biblically, we believe it is going to come to those who are faithful. But there's a reward at the end of that as well. Well, Matthew 24 says all that, doesn't it? You will be persecuted. You will be, they'll want to kill you they'll, they'll, um, because you follow me. And if you won't speak when it's not your your life's not on the line today mm. in in our free country where we're speaking, yet people are so cowardly to say what's true. Mm. Mm. What, what's it going to be like when yeah. it's actually death threat? How do they think it's going to work well, when this? You've got to grow some happens. courage today. Faith mm. and courage go hand in hand in the Bible. Winston Churchill said, "Courage is the is the most important of all the, the great uh, what did he call them." Uh, characteristics or, uh, because upon it rest all the other virtues. It's the greatest of the virtues, he said, courage. Mm. Because without courage, you won't speak. Mm. Freedom of speech won't matter if you don't speak when you've got that freedom. Mm. So, yeah, we, we should be respectful and, and courteous and everything, but always truthful. Mm. Yep. And we're enjoying your comments on the show. If you've got some something to say. What book are we going to share Love with to hear you today? <laughs> the Global War on Freedom. So text the word STORM to 0482 082 876, the word STORM, and we will get you out that book. If you miss that number, you can get it on YouTube. You can listen to this on the Faith FM app on the app stores. And uh, we send people with those books to make sure they get into your hands we don't yep. we don't always trust the post we uh we make sure we get it into your hands so if you want one of those books the great controversy the global war on freedom text the word storm to 0482082876 and yeah there is there's a lot of great feedback from people who are getting this book from this show mm. and getting into it any last words on the freedom of speech is there anything you want to say i will let you be free to speak I just say, don't be offended. Work out what's truth. And and people have different opinions than you. Emotionally sober. Be emotionally sober. But have some courage. It's, say what's true. Hmm. Get used to it now. It's going to be easier later. Well, looking forward to next week and seeing what comes here on The Perfect Storm. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your afternoon.